Good morning to everyone. My name is Camilo Torres. I'm from Barcelona. I'm a student in the master's degree in periodontology in Barcelona. And I'm going to talk about the mandibular fluctuation in this EFP guideline, the third step of therapy. First, I'm going to present you, introduce you, the supporting literature in this recommendation. In this part, we have two systematic reviews. The first one is by Domis, 2020. Uh, it's regarding the resective surgery for the treatment of purcation embolment. It's a systematic review. And basically, the aim of this study was to assess the benefit of resective surgical treatment, including root apuntation or resection, root separation, tunnel preparation, tunneling and tunnelization of teeth with purcation embolment class 2 and 3 compared to non-surgical treatment or open flight debridement. Regarding the materials and methods, the outcomes were to survival, vertical pruning and attachment gain, and reducing um, of proving pocket depth. They include randomized control trials, prospective and retrospective studies, and case series with at least 12 months of follow-up. And then from, they include the articles from 1998 to 2018. Regarding the PICOS components for the population, they introduce subjects with periodontitis who have complete at least one cycle of non-surgical periodontal therapy and exhibit class two and three purcation embolment. Regarding the intervention is a resective surgical periodontal therapy, including the, the treatments that I mentioned. Regarding the comparison group is a non-resective surgical periodontal therapy, but not further treated and treated exclusively by a subgingival development or access flap surgery. And regarding the outcomes, the primary outcome was the tooth survival and the secondary outcomes were vertical proving attachment gain, reduction of proving pocket depth, and patient-related uh, outcomes and possible adverse effects. And the study design, as I mentioned, randomized control trials, prospective and retrospective court studies, and case series with at least 12 months of follow-up. Regarding the results, 66 articles were identified for the full-text analysis, but seven articles studies were analyzed for methodological quality. In a total, we have 665 patients and 2021 uh, teeth with percussion movement type 2 and 3. And the result is that uh, 1,515 teeth survive 4 to 30 years after the therapy. This survival range from the different treatment, 38 to 94 percent when they was treated by root amputation or root resection, around 62, 67 percent by tunnel preparation, around 63, 85 percent for open flight environment, and finally, 68% to 80% 80 for scaling and replanning. In the left, you can see the graphic. Uh, basically, 1,074 uh, teeth were treated by scaling and replanning, 449 by root amputation, 19 for tunnel preparation, and 479 by open flight environment. So basically, the main conclusion of this study is that in a forcation type 2 and type 3, scaling and replanning and open flight environment may result in a similar survival rate as root amputation, resection, root separation, or tunneling technique. For the second article that I'm going to introduce you, it's published by Jepsen in 2019. In this case, is regarding the regenerative surgical treatment of purcation defects. It's a systematic review and Bayesian network analysis of randomized clinical trials. Basically, the aim of this article was to evaluate the performance and the heat value of surgical regenerative techniques in terms of tooth loss, purcation closure and conversion, horizontal bone level gain, and other periodontal parameters of teeth affected by periodontitis related purcation defect, and at least again 12 months of follow up. Regarding the material methods in this, in this study, they only include uh, randomized control trials evaluating the relative surgical treatment of purcation with a minimum of 12 months of follow up. Regarding the primary outcomes were the tooth loss, purcation improvement, gain horizontal bone level and attachment level. For the secondary outcomes were gaining vertical attachment level, proving pocket depth reductions and patient related outcomes and adverse events. In the flow chart, as you can see, only 19 articles were included in this uh, study. The following treatments were included. We have a guide tissue regeneration with non resorbable membrane and resorbable membrane, bone replacement graft, enamel matrix derivate and open flight development. In any of the studies, the tool loss was reported. And regarding the relative techniques, the purcation conversion was from class two to one and ranged from 20 to 30%. Another interesting finding is that regenerative techniques were superior to open fly development in terms of purcation improvement, original cal gain, vertical cal gain, and proving pocket reduction. 
In this table, you can see the a summarize, a brief summarize of uh, periodontal parameters. For example, for fulcation improvement in the group of GTR uh, with resolvable membrane plus bone replacement graft and uh, enamel matrix derivative was uh, was 100%, 86% for the enamel matrix derivative with bone replacement graft, and only 6% for uh, a group of open flight refinement. Regarding the fulcation closure, with the combination of the regenerative therapy range from 0 to 60%, and for example, with the enamel matrix derivative range from 0 to 18%. Regarding the proving pocket their production, the higher ranking were as follow. First of all, the group of GTR non resolvable membrane plus the bone replacement graft, then the GTR with resolvable membrane with bone replacement graft and enamel matrix derivative, and finally, the group of enamel matrix derivative. Regarding the vertical clinical attachment level gain, the highest ranking were as follow. GTR no resolvable membrane with uh, bone replacement graft. The second group was the GTR resolvable membrane plus bone replacement graft plus enamel matrix derivative. And finally, the GTR with resolvable membrane plus bone replacement graft. For the horizontal clean attachment level gain, the net network meta analysis was not possible, but the Bayesian meta analysis found no statistical significance difference between the group of GTR with the use of resolvable membrane against GTR with the group of non resolvable membrane. And regarding the horizontal bone level gain, the higher ranking were as follow with the group of bone replacement graft, then the group of resolvable membrane with bone replacement graft, and finally the group of enamel matrix derivative. So basically, here you can see the conclusions of this study. And the main conclusion is that we have uh, better results in terms of horizontal kin attachment level gain, fulcation improvement, vertical kin attachment level gain, and reduction of premium pocket death in comparison of regenerative techniques to open flight deployment. The procedures with the higher ranking in terms of horizontal bone level gain are the bone replacement graft, then the GTR with the resolvable membrane plus the bone replacement graft, and finally the enamel matrix derivative. In terms of uh, horizontal bone level gain, vertical cal gain and proving pocket depth reduction was similar between the groups of resolvable and non-resolvable membrane. And when the, this group of GTR with resolvable membrane at the bone replacement graft leads to more horizontal bone level gain than the group with, without the bone replacement graft. Another interesting finding is that the PROMs show less postoperative swelling campaign following the enamel matrix derivative compared to the GTR group with the resolvable membrane. And the main conclusion of this study is that no gold standard in regenerative treatment of class 2 purgation can be defined. Now I'm going to to explain you the recommendation of these EFP guidelines, I am in the 7.6. So first of all, the first question is, what is the adequate management of molar with class two and class three purgation involvement and residual pockets? And the actual recommendation, the EFP recommendation is that in this case, we have, we have to receive, uh, it's have to receive periodontal therapy. And another important thing is that the purgation involvement is not a reason for extraction. And that was based on the article by Dosnitz 2020 that we have a reasonable survival rate over the time. Also, in an economic point of view, that in my point of view is interesting, the tool retention after the complex periodontal therapy of teeth with purgation movement is more cost effective than the extraction and replacement with an implant supported fixed partial denture. For the second question, what is the adequate management of residual deep pockets associated with mandibular class 2 purgation movement? The recommendation of the EFP is uh, to treat, in this case, with periodontal regenerative surgery. And that was based in the result that I mentioned by the article by Jepsen 2019. And this benefit is clinically relevant in terms of uh, key attachment level and proving pocket their reduction. Also, uh, we have to take into account that we have to choose correctly the case in terms of patient-related factors, tooth-related factors, and defense-related factors. We know that regenerative surgery has additional costs, but which appear to be justified by the eight benefits in terms, for example, of purgation improvement. The next question is, what is the adequate choice of regenerative biomaterials for the regenerative treatment of residual deep pockets associated with class two mandibular and maxillary buccal purgation involvement? And in this case, the recommendation is to use the enamel matrix derivative alone or bone derivative graph with or without the sorbonne membrane. And also, it was based on the article by Jepsen in 2019. And another important thing is that the patient preference uh, is the enamel matrix derivative because show less postoperative, postoperative swelling and pain than non-resolvable membranes. 
And the last question of my part is what is the adequate management of mandibular class three for cashew removal? In this case, the recommendation is that uh, when we have a multiple class two for cashew removal in the same tooth or a class three for cashew removal, non-surgical instrumentation, open flight deployment, root separation or resection may be considered and is based on the article by Domis 2020. But in this case, we have to select correct the case and take into consideration some factors such as the bone loss, the mobility of the tooth, and some other factors. For finish my presentation, I am going to show you the flowchart that is on my part, the management of uh, mandibular forcation. As I mentioned it in another uh, presentation, we have to take into account three important things. The first one is the level of care. The second one is the high quality stepwise treatment approach. And also, and very important thing is the oral hygiene consideration. Uh, it's not recommended to perform any periodontal or implant surgery in patients unable to achieve and maintain adequate levels of self performed oral hygiene. The second part of the flowchart is when we are going to perform a resected surgery, open blade deployment, tunneling, and non surgical techniques. We have two clinical scenarios when we have class two forcation involvement, or when we, are, we have class three forcation involvement, we are going to focus in the mandibular area because it's my, it's my topic. And when it's multiple on the same teeth, we have to consider the non-surgical instrumentation, the open flight deployment, and the periodontal re uh, resignation, but we have to correct, uh, select the case. The same happened with the class three forcation involvement. But when this class two forcation involvement is, in is single in the buccal or lingual aspect, uh, the recommendation is to perform a periodontal regenerative surgery using bone derived graft with or without resolvable membranes and enamel matrix derivate. And also, and the correct form is when this finish, we have to perform the correct revaluation and introduce the patient in a correct supportive periodontal therapy. My conclusion of this part is for me the very important is that the fortification involvement is not a reason for extraction and is. Um, based on the uh, literature that we mentioned today, that indicates that there is a reasonable survival rate over the time, even in the class three forcation involvement. And my message is that we are periodontists and we have to give our teeth a chance. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you much, Camilo. Um, could you just repeat what is what are the uh, regular protocols in your department, in your program, uh, related to uh, class two forcations? When do you decide to perform a, a resective surgery or uh, access flaps, and when do you decide to perform a regenerative therapy? Well, first of all, uh, the patient has to achieve a good oral hygiene, and we have to avoid perform the phase one therapy, the, the disinflammation phase. And in this term, we have to uh, assess what type of bone loss have the patient. It is a horizontal bone loss. It may be considered to perform a resective surgery, but in the case that we have vertical defects or vertical components, and we have to take in account a lot of factors, such as, for example, the smoking behavior of the patient, the numbers of the walls of the defect, or the deep and shallow defect that is the defect, we have to consider the regenerative approach. I think that a uh, good planification of the case is the key for the success of the treatment. Thank you. Uh, there is a question from Paris about uh, the forcations. So please open your mic, microphone, and, and ask. Yes, hello. Paris? Thank you for your. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 Rene, you can, you can go on. Thank you for the presentation. We have a question concerning the economic consideration. You said in your presentation that it would be more costly to try a regenerative approach in uh, comparison with the uh, implant replacement? No, no, I said the contrary. It's more, um, it's more expensive to place an implant and perform the, the prosthesis and also to maintain this implant than to perform a uh, regenerative approach or receptive approach of this uh, tooth. Okay, thank you. 